read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners welcome back welcome back it's a new week at read me romance um we have a brand new book from Olivia Sinclair. Sorry, I just hit my microphone. <laughs> from Olivia Sinclair. It's called Cole, Mountain Men of Seal Force Delta Tango. Which, like, it sounds really, like, aggressive. <laughs> it sounds very strong. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't dislike that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Olivia Sinclair has got us a brand new book. Um, we're going to play in just a little bit, talk about all her good stuff. But before then, we're going to catch up a little bit. And, um, yeah. So, you know, last week we had the live episode, which was great. It was, it was fun. It was really fun to have people included in the chat and be able to talk to them real time. I did listen back to the episode because I had to, you know, listen for quality control and make sure like the audio is right and everything. So I was listening to it um, the other day and I was like, it's funny to me when I listen to it because I remember, you know, what was happening and what people were saying, but I could see how maybe if you didn't have the video to go it with it. confusing. Yeah. That some of it might be confusing. Like there was that one moment where Natalie Knight had made a comment about one of our AR taboo books uh -huh. and I just lost it because it, I just thought it was funny. It just, it hit me really funny how she said it. Because the name of the book is Milk Made for My Uncle. And she said something like, let me get that Milky Uncle one, <laughs> that Milky Uncle book. And I don't know why. <laughs> just like, I just thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. And I just laughed so hard. And I was listening to the, you know, listening back to the episode. And I thought, people are going to think I'm insane because I'm just <laughs> cackling and they don't know why. So I do have um, the episode posted on YouTube, though, if you want to go and watch it and maybe, um, get some better context clues for what's happening because it's just, it was, it was really fun, but it was a little chaotic too. <laughs> so, but that was, that was great. And, uh, you know, we, again, we appreciate everybody for listening and stuff and coming back. Um, I have a book I wanted to talk about that I have not read yet, but I've been so excited for this to come out. Um, it's by Shanora Williams, who is a friend of the podcast. We haven't been able to get her on yet, but she swears she's coming on this season. <laughs> I have her tentatively on the calendar, I think in October, maybe. She was like, what's the latest I can turn a book in to be on the podcast? <laughs> but, her books um, are usually really long, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had like a lot of obligations too, to like publishers and stuff like that. And so... Um, but she is just such a great person. I just adore her. She's so sweet and bubbly and funny and like sarcastic too. Like I just, I really just enjoy her humor. And, um, so anyways, she wrote a book and the way she teased it was that if you have seen Peaky Blinders, do you know the show I'm talking about? Peaky Blinders. It's a show mm -hmm. on Netflix, but, um, you know who, um, Killian Murphy is, do you know him? Mm -hmm. It, he's the actor that plays the bad guy in it. And he's like a mob boss in the 1920s in, okay. in like the outskirts of London. And he is so fucking sexy. And so that's what she kind of like portrayed her hero as, is this oh, guy. Okay. And it's like so specifically my taste. And I was like, did you write this book for me? Like, I just, I just need to know. But it came out and she did it right. Like she has the book, she had the audio, everything came out together. Like, but I think she self-published this one. I can't remember. But um, and I got the I got the ebook and the audio for like seven fifty. So, which I was or I think that I think the audio ended up being seven dollars. I got the ebook and then the audio was like seven. So, make sure you bundle up if you do want the audio <laughs> with it. Get the ebook so much cheaper. Anyways, um, but I saw a uh, like a video teaser that somebody had made on um, like TikTok or something like that, and she yeah. shared it. But it says it was like I love the angry kiss. Yeah, and I watched it, and she says the heroine's like, "What are you talking about? You hate me!" And he grabs her and he kisses her, and he was like, "Did that feel like hate?" And I was like, oh. That was it. That's what made me click. <laughs> I was like immediately download. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that got me. 
I was like, oh, I love that. When like she thinks that he hates yes. her because yeah, of when everything. They think- mm-hmm. Oh my God. It's so good. But it's part one. And I already saw a review that said the cliffhanger was terrible. And I was oh, like, God shit. damn it. <laughs> but I'm going to read it. I'm, I'm going to read it. Anyways, I don't care. So so that one's called Vicious Bonds by um, Shonora Williams. So if you want to check it out and read it with me, do it. But all the reviews on there are so good. Everybody that I know that's read it is like fucking phenomenal. Yeah. So I mean, she's a great writer anyway. She writes like really good like romance thrillers kind of. Mm-hmm. So yeah. good. She always, always has beautiful covers too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really like different too. Uh-huh. They're very eye-catching. They always yeah. catch my eye. Mm-hmm. She actually came um, when I did the book signing in um, Kannapolis here. When I was there, she actually came there and said, hey. And I was like, why are you not here signing? Like, you should have a mm-hmm. table. And she was like, no, 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 no. I'm just here to say hey. <laughs> like, she was really nice about it. So um, who – now tell me, what was the book that we were talking about earlier that you said you're really excited to read? And I said, do you want me to message the author? Because I saw, like, we had an ad for her. And then you're like, I want to read this book. <laughs> And I was like, do you want me to message well, her? I keep and saying, you're like, no, <laughs> she doesn't have it ready yet. Uh, I forget what the title of it was. Because I don't it's know like if she didn't have a back t- or something. No, it's like the, is it the title? It, oh, it's stalked wide by the wide receiver. That's it. I knew it was a football position. <laughs> like because there eventually. no, you've been waiting for, like the first two books were mm-hmm. like the quarterback. And yeah, so the first book was the quarterback and then he was crazy stalking her going into her apartment and shit Mm -hmm. and then the next one was stalked by the tight end and he's doing the crazy shit too and then this Mm -hmm. third book that i've been waiting for this one Mm -hmm. and she's released like seven other books (laughs) oh no in the meantime i think she had like stuff lined up because you know there's a lot of author series out there where Mm -hmm. everybody's writing oh like she had a bunch of those because i kept it was like why what is going on why is there seven (laughs) years Mm -hmm. and i wanted this hero because they all the three of them lived together in this shitty apartment and they lived in this shitty apartment because the quarterback was obsessed with the girl that lived across the hall Ah, so it kind of made them live there yeah anyways the third guy that's the friend thinks they're both insane he's like you're (laughs) fucking insane he's like i'm here for one reason football I don't do the partying. I don't do the girls. I don't do nothing. I'm here. So he's like a virgin. Oh, wow. So I, I, I'm like waiting to see who's the girl that knocks the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. So that's Ooh. why I'm like dying for the book because she's teased him so much. Like in the background, him like rolling his eyes at these guys. You know, mm-hmm. it's always nice to see the hero fall on his ass. Oh, something. yeah, for sure. And be like, so oh, these are fuck. stalking by um, Myra Statham. But then she went and did this. So she drops the pre order for Stalk by the Wide Receiver. I think this is going to mm-hmm. be the third book, the final book yeah. of the series. They're each standalone, mm-hmm. you know, limited. No, she drops a second pre order with it Stalk by the Coach. Oh, shut up. So you get the coach one too now? I, yeah. Oh, I was like, that's oh, going to be good. <laughs> I guess that'll be worth the wait. Well, she knows what she's doing. I she can't... knows her target audience, which is apparently you. Oh, God. <laughs> so, I, didn't, okay. I didn't tell you what happened to me today. Because I was what? like, I'll wait till. So I see my daughter say she was rent in and out today quick like when she got home she had guitar practice or whatever so she came mm-hmm. in and she was back out the door to go to guitar practice and she hasn't been gone 10 minutes and my phone starts to ring and i always does anyone do you get nervous when your phone rings all the time because nobody in my family calls mm-hmm. we voice text or text so i see her name i know she's on the road oh god so you're like you know what i mean i'm like yeah i'm like fuck she hit something Mm -hmm. she's in a ditch she hit another curb yeah whatever i get on the phone and she's like mom i'm like yeah what's going on she's like i've been pulled over and i'm like okay and she's like the cop wants to talk to you (laughs) what the cop what so wait wait the cop asked to talk to her mother. Yes, he goes. I realized that she was seventeen. I asked her where she's headed. She said she was headed to guitar practice. I asked her if she had a job, and she said no. So I figured it would be if I wrote her a ticket that you would be the one that would have to pay for it. Oh, okay. So I wanted to call and tell you what she did, 
and give her a warning and you can handle the punishment or whatever you want to do as you see fit. But I didn't want to punish you for something she did, but I wanted you to be aware that she ran a red light. Oh my God. And she just didn't run a red light like, um, like it was yellow and then red. No, he was like, it was a very intentional run. He goes, because it's two lanes going each way. Uh-huh. And he said, I was a few cars behind her and the light turned yellow and the car in front of her started to break because he was going to stop for it. And she went into the other lane to keep oh, going. Shit. So, oh, shit. Because she was running late for guitar practice, which I yeah. kind of knew because she was running around the house mm-hmm. to get out of yeah. here. And I was like, well, thank you. I haven't really got to talk to her yet because she, uh-huh. when he got done, she's like crying hysterically. I was like, stop. He started got shit scared out of her. At this yeah, point. for sure. Yeah. But then I still at the same point, I wanted to be like, I haven't talked to her yet. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I said, I was like, go to guitar practice. We'll talk about this later or whatever. Mm-hmm. Part of me inside wants to be like, did you admit to running the red light? <laughs> You handed your phone to a cop? Have you lost your mind? You lost your mind. Who hands their phone to a cop? I don't have no phone. I don't have, <laughs> I'm like, you don't say shit. You're like, they're like, did, I, did you know that you ran a red light? I'm like, I've never yeah. seen a red light in my life. <laughs> Can I just have What's the red light? <laughs> you turn the questions back on them. <laughs> Oh, but God. at the same time, he was super nice to her. I know. And he yeah. got the point across to her. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What are you going to do? I did text her one thing. And I don't know if this is terrible. You can tell. I, you oh, can tell shit. me if this is bad that I text. I said, because you know my family know. can be. I know. Where do I know? We can be gossipy or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I said, FYI, I didn't tell your dad. So if I was you, I wouldn't tell anyone else in this family. I wouldn't either. That's a good, I would say that. Yeah. Because if she even tells Oliver or something, you know Uh what I mean? I was like, then. Everybody's going to know. I said, this better be me and Mm you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Better hush that up. Which is probably going to make her feel like shit too. You know, that you're like having to keep a secret for her. Yeah, I just know that Rob will get like, I feel like she was jolted enough and she yeah. doesn't need another yeah. jolting. Oh, man. I thought wait, she, she's not working right now. Uh-uh. She oh. wants to. Mm-hmm. She like goes back and forth on what she wants to do. I don't know. Her grades are really good. So I need to leave her alone. And she doesn't <laughs> ask. She actually really doesn't ask for a ton of money. They just hang at houses and shit. Yeah, yeah. God, she's about to be 18, too. Yeah, this year. Yes. Okay, I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) We're getting old. I don't want to talk about it. Um, I wanted to see if you um, had seen the teaser that Sarah Jessica Parker posted on her Instagram for their filming. I guess they're filming the second season of And Just Like That, the Sex and the City spinoff. Okay. It's her in the street with Aiden and they're kissing. I thought he... it's Oh, Aiden. Aiden. It's Shit. Aiden. You know, and I was like, I saw the picture and I thought, that's how they're going to get me to watch this shit. That is how they're going to get you to watch yeah, this right? shit. <laughs> I was like, fuck. That's how they're going to fucking get me to watch it. God damn it. He was my favorite. He was? He was, he was my favorite. He was the good guy. But I didn't I didn't think that they should be together. I didn't, I didn't think either. she was good enough for him. Honestly. I didn't think I agree with you. I did not think that she was good enough for him. But he was so obsessed with her. That he was, was really the good to her. He was so good. He made her that chair. Yeah. Remember that chair that was in her room? And like when they broke up, she sat in it and cried. Oh my God. They're gonna get me. Cause I remember when they did the movie, they did Sex and the City, like the the movie, I think it was part two when they went to like Dubai or something. Mm-hmm. And Aiden was there. He was a photographer and he was like right. shooting something. And he was married. Mm-hmm. And so like I remember thinking at the time, like, okay, that's you know, not cool. Right? Maybe it was the first one. I can't remember. No, it was the second one. I can't remember, but I remember them running into anyways. each other in Dubai. Yeah, and like 
I, they kissed or something when that yeah, happened. Yeah, and that really bothered me because I felt like that yeah. did not play to Aiden's character. But and they it's were just... like, but she's like his kryptonite for whatever reason. He has always been so fucking hung up on her. You know what? I wonder if that's the thing about they out that saying the nice guy always finishes last. But is it not necessarily maybe that the nice guy isn't always going for the wrong kind of girl? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. That you're going for mm-hmm. this weird kryptonite girl that's going to destroy you. Yeah. Well, and he had like, remember he had a baby? Yeah. And like, he's, you know, I don't know what's going on, you know, in his life now. I mean, it's been so long. I mean, fuck, look at Brady. Like, he's like grown, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Like, I don't know about his kid. I don't know how old he is. But the picture was like the two of them, like kind of side by side, like talking, like on the street or something like that. And then the next one she posted, they were like embracing in the street of New York. And I was like, fuck, they're going to get me. God damn it. That's how they're going to do it. I hate those love stories, but then I kind of like, I let, when I read a romance, yeah. I want to do, you know, you see each other and you're together forever. Mm-hmm. But sometimes there's something about people falling apart and growing up and growing into mm-hmm. different people. And, you know, now it's their time mm-hmm. that does, that is appealing. Well, and there's also something about like the emotional connection, like, but it's, it's a real relationship, you know, yeah. I mean, not necessarily, it's not real, like real, but that's potentially what literally could happen to someone, you know, mm-hmm. like it's, it's something that is reality, the type of relationship that they've had where they've, you know, together apart, together apart, like this kind of thing where they've had this, this force that keeps pulling them back together all these years, you know, I that is imagine- a reality. God, just thinking about it myself. Let's say I ran into my ex. I bet mm-hmm. we would be, God, that's like 18 years ago. I bet yep. we were completely different people. We yeah. could actually probably click better now or worse. You never yeah. know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. You never know. But, know. you know, I like I saw some, somebody I follow on Instagram had posted up a thing today that was like, does anybody have a book like this? And there was like a guy that was like sobbing and he's like, I'm broken. <laughs> and it's like, she said, I just want to read a love story that hurts right now. And it, like, I would never seek that out. I would never willingly walk into a book, but I get it. I think I know what kind of book she would want. Oh, What? God, I'd have to look it up. It's you go, you know, Kelsey Moon, or she writes with Lauren Don or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. She has a book. She Kelly a Moon series. is K E L E. She has a whole series. The first one is called Defying Odds. It's awesome. It's one of the best books I've mm-hmm. ever read. I probably read it once a year. It's an audio, Kindle Unlimited. Definitely read it. But then there is, I think it's the third book or the second book. Mm-hmm. Is about the, his best friend mm-hmm. who's a sheriff out of town. And you don't hear, they make jokes that he's a playboy or something, or the girls are always hitting on him in the first book. But it wasn't until you got to his book and you find out he's fucking married and his wife is gone. Oh, shit. Yeah. So then the book goes back in time to mm. them being children. And, like, it plays out. And he's been in love with this girl, like, his whole life. Even when they were, like, in middle school, he's like, I'm going to make you fall in love with me one day. But he's, like, the sheriff's uh, son. And she lives Mm -hmm. in the trailer park. And yeah, there's parts of the story where, like, it rips your heart out. And there is Mm. a sexual assault in the center of it that happens to her and she runs away so i just want to give that warning but and every other sense of the book they're both safe they've never been with anybody else except for when that happened to her yeah so but the book rips your heart out at the same time as it's like extremely healing because he doesn't Mm -hmm. know why she ran and she has to come back to town and it's just like, and he can't stay away, even though like he's so mad that she left and he doesn't know why she left, but he can't stay away from her. Oh, he's like, no. you're staying in my fucking house. 
I love that. But it's, that, it's just, yeah, it's so yeah. It's good. Like, I don't even want to give it away. And then he finds out what happened and he's a cop. And now he wants to, like, do some uncop like shit. <laughs> and it's just a really good up. Yeah. But the love story going back in time was probably one of the best parts of the book. But yeah, it does. It rips you mm-hmm. just watching him. The other girls will try to flirt with him. He's like, nope, I'm going to marry such and such. Yeah. Well, you know, I can, like I said, I can understand her saying that because I think sometimes when you read romance, especially like us, where if you read a ton of books and they're, some are the same, some are different, you're trying to find like that emotion either like get super filthy and dirty and turned on like, oh yeah, I want something like nasty. Or if you want something that's like sweet and contemporary. Even reading those type of books, if you read them over and over and over and over, eventually you're desensitized to it, you know? Yeah. So I can get her saying, like, I just need a book to rip my heart out. Like, yeah. you know, just to shake it up, <laughs> you know, to get just, to get yeah. a different emotion. Yeah. I feel like that's one that was like that. that I ended it. Mm-hmm. I cried and cried and cried, but it was like a good cry mm-hmm. on both ends for all of it. There is, um, and I've never read this book, even though I love Tilly Cole, but A Thousand Boy Kisses. Did you ever read that book? I've never read it. Every person I know that has read that book has sobbed to it. And I don't know why. I'm assuming that they all die. (laughs) That's what I assume happens in the end (laughs) because of the way people react to that book but everybody talks about how good it is but the way people react scares me it that's scares why me i haven't ever, I'm, just like, mm, yeah. I'm just not emotionally there yeah just- yeah but you know what when i saw that lady's post today on instagram i thought God, i should tell her that book even though i've never read it i don't know what kind of heartache it would be but i thought God, eventually i gotta read that book i'm, d- I'm just gonna do it i'm at some point i'm gonna have to read that book I'm always scared of her stuff. I see oh, people yeah. say oh, yeah. the best stuff about her. Like I when know. her books go out, people are like all over They're hardcore. It. hardcore. And I'm just like, I, just, I can't be that emotional. <laughs> I know. Well, and I, like I said, I love Tilly Cole. She is so sweet and like, she's very charismatic. Like mm-hmm. if you see her talk, you'll just fall in love with her. She's a, so great. And, um, but she writes like all over the spectrum. Like she writes all kinds of books. So like, she'll have like that sweet thousand boy kisses. Mm -hmm. And then she'll have like this, like vampire, like gothic book. And then she'll have like all these, uh, like it's, she has a bunch of MC books. Like she has a huge motorcycle series. And so like, she's kind of all over the place with her writing, but still every time one comes out, it's the same, like her fans just go nuts. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, I'll say I've got some lady listener emails. But I'll save them for the next episode now that we've talked for a little bit. So, <laughs> But um, let's talk about Olivia Sinclair and all of her good stuff before we run too incredibly long. Like I said, we have the book Cole for you today. Um, but let me read Olivia's author bio she sent. I write steamy romance that's safe, funny, and totally over the top. My heroes are always alpha males because the stronger they are, the harder they fall. I like that. that. (laughs) Luckily, luckily the smart, sassy heroines know how to catch them and make everything better. I never get tired of believing that love can show up unexpectedly and with determination. That it can find you anywhere, even curled up on the couch, in your jammies, while eating ice cream and binging romance novels. Then a knock on the door reveals your gorgeous new neighbor that you didn't even know moved in. Or maybe it's that hot friend of your dad's you only know through photos. Possibly the HEAs come easier because my home and office are in a romantic clearing of a giant evergreens in the Pacific Northwest. Think Snow White without the dwarves. But I have a bounty of wild animals that come visit. There's even a resident new thatch that talks to itself constantly. And there are currently seven chickens in their hen house. All right. So that's her author bio about Olivia Sinclair. And if you like what you hear today with Cole, you're in luck because there is so much more for you to listen to. Um, this audio book, it ties in. It's the first book in her Mountain Men of Seal Force Delta Tango series. So there's six stories in total. 
So if you like this, it's an intro into this series. So you'll get to meet some of the other characters and you can continue after this. Um, she has a new release, um, Awkward Secrets, which is the third book in the Surrender to Fate series. Uh, she also has a book called Finding Alexi, which is on sale for 99 cents on all platforms. So that's um, outside of KU. It's everywhere. It's like Barnes & Noble, Apple, Nook, Kobo. Um, and then she also has, if you sign up for um, her newsletter, she is giving a book weekly. So like each week you get a scene in a book. So if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get all you've missed and you'll get the new ones each week. It's called Her Billionaire Beast is the name of the book. And she's emailing you a scene every week. And then you'll get the whole thing before it releases, which is awesome. And um, don't forget to check out, oh, she's got a free book called Lucy, which features a romance author and a modern Viking who looks just like her best-selling hero, <laughs> which I thought was like a great premise. So. I know. All right, so you're about to listen to Cole, and I'll read you the book bio on that one, too. I've turned, Cole, I've turned the occasional wandering hiker away, but Emma and her friend managed to fall in the lake, too. Getting her warm again has me all hot and bothered. My cozy mountain cabin might, have, might not have the kind of electricity that will turn on lights, but suddenly the air is crackling. Emma, I thought I was hallucinating, but every hard, gorgeous inch of Cole is real. Can I really just trust that I mean more to him than just convenience? I mean, it sounds like the man hasn't seen a woman in years. Meet the mountain men of Seal Forest Delta Tango. A high-profile mission becomes a media firestorm. To survive the fallout, a tight-knit team of Navy SEALs relocate deep in the mountains. They know how to stay alive, even thrive, in treacherous conditions. But when love shows up out of the blue, will they continue to fight or surrender their hearts? Each story is a short and steamy is each story is short and steamy with an HEA. It's over the top insta love with no drama, cheating, or cliffhangers. But there's plenty of snuggling under the covers, high in the mounds, and a rather noticeable lack of guest rooms. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. That right? is really cute. I love it. I love it. All right. That's it. Let's send them in. Let's do it. See you guys on the other side. Bye. Cole, Book One of Mountain Men of Seal Force Delta Tango, written and narrated by Olivia Sinclair. Chapter One Cole. It's a freakishly beautiful spring day. The sun is shining down on the damp leaves as last night's frost melts, and I've stripped down to my t shirt. I'd never admit it to anyone, but I'm a tad chilly. Still, the warmth on my bare skin feels good, a welcome sign that the long winter is finally coming to an end. About time, considering it's fucking May. Which is why I groan when the radio permanently glued to my hip comes to life with a crackle of static. Perimeter breach. Perimeter breach section six, the automatic voice announces. Well, fuck. There goes my relaxing afternoon clearing brush where I'm going to build a sauna. Not going through another winter as cold as this last one. Figure those Scandinavians know a thing or two about surviving winter in style, so it's worth the effort to construct a traditional sauna. I have to make sure it's able to seat at least ten guys, though, so that's going to take a while. I'm close enough to headquarters that I might as well go there first to see if the cameras picked up anything. It's probably a deer, despite our best efforts and latest tech to exclude them but I'll have to recheck the perimeter wires to make sure everything remains operational. I shake my head at the mass of signs that now plaster the front of the building, formerly known as Joe's Bar and Grill. I have no idea who Joe was, but the bar shut down in the early 80s, and the remaining decor is proof that it never reopened. Currently, it's the meeting room, internet access, and communication center for members of our former SEAL battalion. Cabin fever is real and it's resulted in some pretty funny signs as you walk up to the entrance. No girls allowed is one of the largest, but someone has added in red spray paint, except Tabitha. That pretty girl is currently sunning herself on the top step, her orange fur glowing in the sunlight and her green eyes slitted against the glare. I bend down to scratch her under the chin and she leans into my hand. We think someone dumped her along the highway, but we can't be sure. 
She wandered into the camp last fall, wet and bedraggled, and simply stayed. She's got a knack for knowing who's feeling a little down and will simply wander by his residence and purr at him until he cheers up. Or at least that's what it seems like. It's hilarious watching a group of big tough guys fall over themselves to make sure one little orange cat has everything she could ever want. I move past the bar area and into the back room where the monitors are arranged in neat banks. What have we got, Lieutenant? I say to the man already scrolling through feeds. Ryan turns to me, rolling his eyes. Looks like lost tourist season has already started. Two women came through at the lake trail. Can you and Evan head down there and deal with them? I'll double check there's nothing else going on. Sure thing, boss man. He rolls his eyes again and turns towards the screens. Pulling out my radio, I call Evan as I head back outside. Yo, meet me at the tool shed, ASAP. There's a lull, then a crackle of static before a grumpy voice asks, Why? Intercept, I answer, simply jogging down the path towards the old wooden tool shed at the back of the orchard. Evan is already there waiting for me, shaking wood shavings out of his hair with his fingers. Hurry up, Cole. I want to get this table finished before dinner. I didn't invite them. If it cheers you up, the lieutenant says they're women. Evan frowns harder. Why would that cheer me up? It's not like we get to keep them. I shrug. Shoot me. I enjoy looking at women, and I haven't seen one in the flesh for more than six months. Not since the highway closed with the first big snowfall last November. Let's go find them, see what we're dealing with. We head towards Blue Lake and the deer trail that edges it. Tourists coming from the other side sometimes mistake it for a hiking trail and let their curiosity get the better of them. Depending on their stamina and the weather, we either send them back the way they came or give them a ride via the road. The two women aren't hard to find. They're making a lot of noise banging about in the brush, and they're not moving very fast. We see why when we finally get a visual. They're both soaked through and wearing jeans and t-shirts. All the things you're not supposed to wear on a hike unless you want to experience hypothermia, which, judging by their movements, has already set in. Ladies, you two take a dip in the lake? Fuck, Chloe. I'm starting to hallucinate big gorgeous men. Save yourself and go on without me, the dark-haired one says to the other, whose hair looks a lot like Tabitha's fur. My lips twitch, and my cock stirs when I get a better look at the one who called me gorgeous. Her wet t-shirt is showing off all her assets, and her tits are magnificent, even imprisoned in her state-of-the-art sports bra. Evan and I exchange looks. We need to get them warmed up, Prano. You take Chloe, and I'll take the other one. He raises an eyebrow at me. You sure about this? Shouldn't we bring them back to the lieutenant? Radio for an ambulance? They aren't actually hallucinating, Evan. Not that I can see. And an ambulance will take over an hour to get here, so we still have to do the basics. If either of them gets worse, I'll drive them to the hospital. He shrugs. Okay, as long as I don't have to come along. He walks forward and picks up Chloe, flinging her over his shoulder, backpack and all, like a sack of potatoes. Emma, I'm being kidnapped, she yells. Evan walks calmly up the trail to a hidden shortcut that leads to his workshop slash cabin and disappears from view. I turn back to the other one, now named Emma. Come on, sweetness, your turn. Let's get you warmed up. She's too cold to put up any protest as I pick her up as gently as I can. It's rough terrain, so I have to make sure my center of gravity isn't thrown off, and yeah, that means she's hanging over my shoulder. Emma. I'm such an idiot. I know better than to go into the woods with only a few granola bars on a water bottle. And yet here we are, soaking wet after Chloe slipped trying to get the perfect photo for her Instagram feed, and I went in trying to pull her out. Now both our phones are dead, and the fact that I feel strangely warm after shivering tells me we aren't far behind. We need to find help fast, but with no phone and no people in sight? That's when I see him. He's over six feet of perfectly built man. The kind I would make if there were a shop in the mall for that. Why, oh why, isn't there? His hair is military short and his muscles are perfectly defined without being overdone. I can tell he's a figment of my imagination because he's wearing a t-shirt and not shivering. He says something, but I can't hear it. 
He's here to escort me to the pearly gates, isn't he? Fuck, Chloe. I'm starting to hallucinate big gorgeous men. Save yourself and go on without me. I tell her my eyes locked on the guy I'm sure now is an angel. That is, until a second man appears. How did I miss him? He's taller but less handsome, plus he's wearing a flannel shirt. He strides up to Chloe and flings her over his shoulder before disappearing into the woods. He isn't going to eat her, is he? I can't get a word out before the gorgeous one carts me off in the opposite direction. I want to shout, to put up a fight, but I'm too cold and weak. Maybe if he's going to eat me, I'll at least get a chance to get warm first. The mountain man barbarian doesn't even seem to be breathing hard as he climbs the steps to a cabin. I wish I could see more than the floorboards, but I can't from this position. He opens the door and carries me inside. Finally, he puts me down. I try to get my bearings, but... Come on, sweetness, stay with me here. We'll get you warm in a second. He pops open the door of a wood stove and stuffs some firewood inside, and then closes it again. I guess he already had a small fire going. Doesn't he read the warnings that say never to leave a fire unattended? I open my mouth to inform him of this, but I get distracted by his hands. He's stripping me right there in the middle of the room. My teeth are starting to chatter violently. The man pulls a duvet off the bed I didn't notice in the corner and drapes it over the rocking chair that he then pulls in front of the fire. Why isn't he wrapping it around me? The rocking chair isn't cold. Then I almost pass out because he pulls his t-shirt off. Oh. My. God. You've never seen such perfect abs in your life. He smirks at me like he can read my thoughts. Or maybe I said them out loud? I don't see how with the way my teeth are vibrating. Okay, Emma. I want you to straddle my lap with your knees on either side and place your hands in my armpits, okay? I'm going to warm your feet with my hands. He sits down in the chair and pulls me onto his lap. He raises my arms for me, placing my hands in his armpits, which is quite frankly weird but effective, and then pulls the blanket around both of us before curling his huge hands around my toes. He presses and rubs gently while I try to come to terms with being this intimate with a man I don't know. And I'm naked as the day I was born. Chloe, I managed to force out between my shivers. Evan's looking after her. He'll radio if there's a problem. He's still rubbing my feet, trying to get my circulation going. I guess it's working because it's starting to hurt. I shift slightly in his touch, gentles. What's your name? I manage. His hands leave my feet to pull my ass up on his lap. Maybe I was slipping. I'm Cole. He starts the chair rocking gently, and I snuggle against the heat of his chest. I'm still shivering, but it's beginning to subside to levels I recognize from being out without a jacket, not near death while hiking. Shower? I ask, thinking hot water might be safer than being in his arms like this. He shakes his head, his expression hard. No hot water. I could heat some on the stove, but honestly it would take so long to get enough to warm you up, it's not worth it. How can he not have hot water? Everyone has hot water and electricity. Now I'm noticing that there are no overhead lights, and I don't see any outlets on the walls. But I can smell him, and he doesn't stink like someone that hasn't had a bath recently. I have so many questions. Maybe he senses I'm feeling better because he suddenly looks down at me quizzically. You feeling like you can sit here on your own for a minute? I want to put some soup on to heat so we can warm you up from the inside too. What kind? His grin is broad, showing off perfect white teeth. Is there any other kind besides chicken noodle? Before I can answer, he picks me up and deposits me back in the chair, wrapping the duvet around me and tucking it in on the sides like he's worried I'll flash the room. Okay, I know he's trying to keep me warm, but I'm like a human burrito. He walks over to a cupboard and pulls out a familiar red and white can, then drops the contents into a small saucepan that he sets on top of the wood stove. Are you some kind of lumberjack? He snorts. No. I am, or rather was, a seal. Um, like the ones in the Navy? He nods. Doesn't that usually involve water like the ocean, not little mountain lakes? Usually. It's a long story. 
I'll tell you part of it after dinner. For now, I want you to try to eat. A burrito over here. I can't free my hands. His eyes are laughing at me as he adjusts things so I can stick my hands out the top of the burrito folds. Then he hands me a thick mug full of soup. Want a spoon? You'd better, otherwise all the good stuff ends up at the bottom. He hands me a simple soup spoon and I set to work. Soup out of a can has seriously never tasted so good. Chapter 2 Cole Emma is too adorable. She's all wrapped up in my covers, her hair starting to dry into loose curls, and her big blue eyes are bright and sparkling. I'll take that story now, she says sweetly, before taking a long sip of the soup, her spoon waving in the air. I sigh. Too many people get starstruck over the wrong things. Did you hear about the raid on the San Sebastian? She nods. Of course, everyone heard about that. That was us. She looks blank. Aren't you too young? That was years ago. I roll my eyes. Never thought I'd be having to prove I was there. And I don't really want to. I was 26. I'm 30 now. Okay. You were there. I haven't seen the movie, by the way. I grin. She's so not impressed, and I think I'm a little bit in love. Doesn't matter. They left the important stuff out. When we boarded the ship, nobody knew there was a reporter with a camera loose about the place. Not sure we'd have done anything different if we had known, but it blew everything up really quickly after that. We were too recognizable to go on missions and too hassled on the street to be any kind of civilians. Anyway, it got to be a problem. More so for some than others. Then our lieutenant had the bright idea for us all to pool our resources, sell the movie rights, and so on. That was enough to buy this place. We've at least got our privacy back and a chance to use some of our skills in the private sector. How? Emma's face gives away all her thoughts, and right now she's thinking I'm delusional. We provide security for a nearby power station, do some bodyguard work here and there. Some of the guys leave for jobs, then come back. Others stay put here. And you? I haven't left this mountain except to run errands in Henderson in two years. She holds out her empty mug and spoon, and I take them into the small kitchen alcove. I'll wash them later. So you don't have a wife or girlfriend, she states dryly. No. Not many women are willing to put up with this way of life. You might have better luck if you had hot water. I shrug. It's all a matter of priorities. Trenches have to be hand-dug, and power lines have to be buried, otherwise they'll snap with the first snowfall. I decided water was more important than electricity, and once I spent a winter in this cabin, I found out I kind of like not having all the gadgets around. Keeps things simple. But what about washing your clothes and drying them? Showers? Depends on the weather. Like I said before, I can heat water on the wood stove, which is what I do for doing the dishes. Most often I take my showers and do my laundry down at headquarters. It's got services from the main line. If I have to, though, I can hang laundry in here. See those two hooks? I point at the steel eye bolts on either side of the room. Clothesline, right there. Emma's eyes are getting wider and wider. Wow. And I thought I was roughing it in a studio apartment. Maybe you are. I've got 600 acres of space outside this cabin, guessing you have concrete. She nods, looking sad. I try to get away as often as I can. Chloe and I decided to try a new spot this time. Rent a cabin for the weekend instead of staying in a hotel. Guess that wasn't such a good idea. Taking a dip in the lake wasn't such a good idea, not dressed in cotton. But the rest of it, since it brought you here to me, I'm all in favor. She blushes, casting her gaze to the wide pine floorboards. Um, do you have a bathroom? Or do I have to go outside to an outhouse? There's a bathroom. Right through there. I gesture towards the small plank door set into the far wall. Can I maybe have a shirt? Or are my clothes dry enough yet? I growl. She better not be thinking about leaving any time soon. I pull one of my favorite flannel shirts out of a drawer and hold it out to her. I busy myself putting more wood in the stove so she doesn't have to put up with me staring at her, even though I want to in the worst way. I turn around again when I hear the chair move back as she stands up. The shirt comes almost to her knees, and now that she's not shivering to death, she's even more gorgeous than I thought. Her lips quirk slightly like she knows what I'm thinking, 
but she heads into the bathroom without a word. I take the duvet and spread it back on the bed. We're going to need it soon. Can we check on Chloe, she asks quietly when she returns. I nod and grab the radio from the windowsill where I always stash it when I'm home. Evan, status? It takes a good long two minutes before the radio crackles in response, during which Emma twists her fingers more and more anxiously. Girl is fine. I'm fine. Leave me alone. That's Evan for you. Gracious as fuck. A little more on Chloe, please. Emma is worried. There's another long pause, then a hesitant feminine voice comes on. Emma? I'm okay, she giggles. Evan is really very sweet. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Emma is laughing silently at the face I made when Chloe described Evan as sweet, but she nods and I pass it on. Thanks, Chloe. Glad you're feeling better. Emma's nodding that she'll see you tomorrow. Tell Evan I'll tan his ass if he stops being sweet. I'm never going to let him hear the end of that one. I put the radio back on the sill and turn to the beauty still standing in the middle of my cabin. You want something more to eat or are you ready for bed? You should stay warm and get some rest after what you've been through today. Um, you only have one bed. Observant, aren't you? Nothing for it but to share, sweetness. For starters, it's still too cold here at night, but also I don't want you getting chilled. Think of me as your personal electric blanket. Pull me close or push me away as needed. She licks her lips and then turns towards the bed, getting in under the covers without another word. Emma. Cole is all my fantasies come to life. I'm still not entirely convinced that I'm not hallucinating. He's that yummy. And totally alphalicious. I don't care if that's not a real word. It is now. I'm pretty sure he's not planning on taking advantage of me, and I'm a little disappointed. Would it be such a bad thing to have a night of passion with a seal-turned-mountain man? Except he's made it clear he's not leaving this patch of wilderness. Nor has he invited me to stay. And let's face it, that would be weird if he did, because he's only known me for a few hours. I sigh with regret, wishing the situation was different so I could at least hope for something to build between us. He hears me and turns back from whatever he was doing with the fire. You okay, Emma? Yeah, just thinking about how different our lives are. His smile is gentle. You think you might ever want to live in a place like this? There's a lot that makes up for the lack of amenities. Oh, like what? A tiny spark of hope springs up deep in my belly. I'm not sure if I should fan it or not. Hmm, let's see. Lots of wildlife. Everything from bear to chipmunks. There's even a pair of bald eagles nesting near the lake. And the food is out of this world. You have to cook it yourself for the most part, but we have chickens for eggs and a community veg garden, plus the old orchard. And then there's the quiet. He comes and sits on his heels so his face is close to mine. And the really long winter evenings with no TV, plenty of time for um, getting to know someone. His gaze is hot as it rakes over my body nestled under the covers. I lick my lips instinctively and I watch his jaw clench in response. I could be tempted to live someplace like that, I offer. Cole's eyes start to twinkle. Guess we'll have to talk more about that in the morning. I'll have to make sure you see more of everything on offer. I gulp and he laughs. For now, sweetness, I need you to scoot this way. I want you closest to the fire and I'll keep you warm from the other side. I do as he asks, and he blows out the small kerosene lamp I hadn't really noticed on the table. There's a soft glow from the stove, but it's not really enough to see by, so I'm impressed when I feel him climb into the bed without having stubbed his toe or something getting there. I'm stiff, waiting for him to settle, unsure of how to sleep with a gorgeous stranger. One that isn't trying to maul me, that is. Cole pulls me close against his chest, wrapping one arm around me under my breasts, and I sense that I'm finally home. Even though I meant to stay awake and talk, my eyelids grow heavy and I feel myself drifting off, comforted by the arm that's holding on to me like I'm something precious. Chapter 3 Emma Sunlight hits my closed eyelids and convinces me to crack them open. I remember waking up once in the night to find Cole on top of me. I squeaked in shock, but he laughed softly and rearranged us both so I was surrounded by his warmth. He breathed into my ear. Go back to sleep, Emma. But for the record, you're the one that burrowed under me. Cutest damn thing ever. 
He kissed my temple lightly and I fell back to sleep. Now I can tell the bed is empty. Heat is bathing my face from the stove that he's clearly refilled, but there's still quite a chill in the air that has me burrowing deeper into the blankets. Cole comes in from outside, bringing a flurry of even colder air with him. He stamps his feet on the mat and looks over at me. Want some coffee? I sit up slightly, nodding enthusiastically. He brings me a big stoneware mug and I breathe it in for a few seconds, letting the fumes wake up my brain cells. Thanks. So what do you do back in the city? He asks me as he slides a frying pan onto the stovetop. I'm an editor. That's something you can do remotely? I nod, taking a deep swallow of coffee. I mostly work from home. Nobody else is ever in the office, so there's not much point in going in. So maybe you'd be up for staying a while? Um, Cole, I don't exactly see any plugs or Wi-Fi in your place. There isn't here, but headquarters is fully equipped. That's part of why most of us don't bother. We're usually in there every day anyway. Show me? I don't know why I'm not dancing around this idea of staying more. Maybe because waking up in Cole's bed every morning sounds like having Christmas every day. Or maybe it's Valentine's based on the way his eyes are scanning my legs that I've swung over the side. Um, yeah, after breakfast. I dash for the bathroom. That floor is cold, damn it. And the water in the taps is practically freezing. I wash as fast as I can, brushing my teeth with my finger, and then hurry back to the fire. I refill my coffee mug and plop myself down in the rocking chair. Watching Cole sling bacon into the pan is like food porn. I mean, it's bacon. And a gorgeous man cooking. How do you have bacon without a refrigerator? I grabbed it from the one in headquarters. I usually eat breakfast there with the guys, but I wasn't sure when you'd be awake, so I brought supplies back. Wait until you taste these eggs. They're the absolute best. He takes the bacon out of the pan, sliding it onto a plate, and starts cracking eggs. In seconds, they're done, and he's handing me a plate that has toast with raspberry jam on it, too. He sits down on the edge of the bed with his own plate, and I dig in. It's the best food I've ever tasted, and I think I moan in ecstasy. Told you, Cole says from behind me, sounding pleased. How come you're not fat? Because I work this off chopping wood and clearing brush? That makes sense. I have a horrible feeling it still wouldn't keep my hips from widening, but I keep that thought to myself. I'm not keeping you from work, am I? Today's my day off. Well, sort of. I'll need to do a patrol in this afternoon, but you're my top priority until then. Emma, I'd really like it if you'd think about a long visit that might turn into something more permanent. Yeah? Yeah. I like you a lot. I like holding you in my arms more than I can say. I don't want to give that up simply because the world says that's moving too fast. I understand if there are things you have to get back to, but I hope you don't. Just a ficus tree and it's dying anyway. I consign my poor houseplant to the trash without further ado. His grin reveals deep dimples on either side. He takes my dishes and sets them on the small counter before pulling me out of my chair. Gonna kiss you now, sweetness. And he does. Like I've never been kissed before because this is a full-body experience. His arms hold me up on my tiptoes because he's too tall to kiss me otherwise, and his lips claim mine like his life depends on it. My arms creep up around his neck, making sure he doesn't change his mind because, damn, he tastes good. He picks me up and sits me on the counter, stepping between my thighs, which is when I realize I still don't have any panties on. I gasp into his mouth as his denim-covered cock presses against my pussy. I tug him tighter against me, locking my legs behind him. His big hands move up my back under my shirt. Okay, technically his shirt. And I suck gently on his tongue that somehow found its way into my mouth. He grinds his erection against me, abandoning my mouth to suck lightly on the curve of my neck. Oh God, Cole. I feel him smile against my skin. Then he nips lightly at my jaw. Either we stop now so I can show you around, or we go straight back to bed and stay there all day. I groan. That there's what I should do and what I really want to do. We should check on Chloe. I don't sound very excited about it, I have to say. Cole steps back with a ragged breath, his hands making sure I don't fall off the counter. You're probably right. Evan can't cook at all. Do you have some clothes I can borrow? Yeah, let me get you down. He lifts me up. 
and sets me on my feet before turning to the built-in cupboard, pulling out some sweats, a t-shirt, and another flannel shirt. How's this? I'll grab you some socks, too. Perfect, thanks. Cole. Stepping back outside the cabin, I try to see everything from Emma's eyes. Is she noticing the bright blue sky and the chickadees lining up at the feeder? Or is her focus on the huge pile of scrap wood I have set aside for the sauna? We're all fairly neat and tidy, guys. That's the military influence, I guess. But you wouldn't call any of us decorators. Nobody's bothered to plant any flowers or other decorative shit. The deer and rabbits would eat it all anyway, although maybe that would distract them from trying to eat all the vegetables. I look down at Emma's beautiful face. She's turned it up to the sky, stopping at the base of the cabin stairs and closed her eyes. She's smiling like she's never felt the sun before. Babe, you okay there? Her eyes open and she flicks her gaze to me. Just enjoying it. Imagining what it would feel like to wake up to this every morning. Um, full disclosure, it's more likely to be overcast than sunny, and at least half the gray days will have something coming out of the clouds. But the trees stay green and the air is completely smog-free. Okay. Show me around then, tough seal guy. I shake my head at that one but can't hold back the grin. I tug her by the hand down the path towards headquarters. I'm so eager to show her all of the modern amenities it contains, I forget about the signs until I hear her gasp. What kind of guys do you hang out with? Her voice is laced with concern. Glancing down at her with puzzlement, I follow her gaze to the sign that says no girls allowed. Ah, that wasn't me. And whoever did it, I promise it was more of a joke. Since there aren't any women here, it was more of an existential statement. Right. So nobody's going to yell when I go in there and point out it's the 21st century? Well, if you lead with that, they're going to be confused. But I doubt any of them would yell. How's this? If anybody does yell at you, I'll punch them in the nose. Are they bigger than you? Some of them. Then maybe no on the punching. But I get tired of shit like that, she gestures at the sign. I'll take it down today. She smiles up at me and lets me lead her up the steps and into the building. A startled laugh erupts behind me when she gets a good look at the decor. What happened here? It's how it was left. And it keeps any passerby from the road from stopping for very long. Do you get those a lot? Nah. One or two will stop in the height of summer hoping for a bathroom or some lunch. We mostly send them on to the gas station ten miles east. Mostly? Well, there was this grandma in her 80s last summer who was on a road trip with her 20-year-old grandson. Nobody had the heart to tell her to hold it, so we let her use the restroom in the back. But we hadn't cleaned the lady since we got here, so I think she regretted stopping. She was muttering about sending in a demolition cleaning crew when she left. Emma's eyes are laughing and her lips are tight like she's trying to hold it all in. Maybe she remembered this place? Because even my parents are too young for this decor. I snort. She's not wrong. My parents weren't even dating when this place closed. Come on, let's find your friend. I take her back through what used to be the bar area to the kitchen and restaurant. Here we stripped out most of the decorations and put in cafeteria-style seating. Because we're not really sitting around like romantic couples and it makes cleanup easier. The kitchen doors have been removed, so it's basically a small mess hall. Evan and Chloe are seated at one end of a table. I must say he's sitting awfully close to her. Chloe! Emma squeals and the redhead looks up with a smile. She jumps up but must have forgotten she was sitting on an attached bench because it's only Evan's quick move that saves her from taking a backward dive. Easy there, Angel. He's looking at her like she's made of spun glass. Chloe recovers with a laugh and steps over the bench, braced by Evan's arm. What the hell got into him? He really is being sweet. I open my mouth to give him shit, but close it again when I see Emma's relief at her friend's well-being. Do you want some of my breakfast? Chloe asks Emma. I think they're done cooking, but I can share. No, Cole made breakfast for me earlier. You eat. Chloe's eyes go wide and they have some sort of silent conversation that goes back and forth before ending with both of them grinning. Chloe rests her hands on Evan's shoulder as she sits back down and bites into a piece of bacon. Evan ruthlessly shovels food into his maw as if the entire room isn't watching him. Well, it's just the four of us here, but still. I'm guessing everyone else has moved on to their regular schedule. I'll get us some coffee, take a seat, I say to Emma and head into the kitchen. I pour two mugs and bring them out again. So, Chloe, I've asked Emma to stay for a bit. We can take you back to your rental whenever you're ready. 
I'm confused when Evan glares at me like I've said something rude, until I see that Chloe's blushing. She's got the super fair skin that often goes with redheads, and it's scarlet at the moment. Um, that's okay, Cole. Thank you. I sort of told Evan I'd help him with some of his projects. He's going to take me to get my car later today. Emma's grinning. She wraps an arm around my bicep and hugs it like it's Christmas morning. I raise an eyebrow in her direction, but she mouths later at me and turns back to Chloe. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Chloe blushes harder, which I wouldn't have thought possible. Emma turns to me. So, Cole, about the internet access. The whole place is Wi-Fi enabled. You can work back here or in the front room. Command center is through there, so that's not an option, but you can stick your head in if you're looking for someone. Command center? For what? Some of it I can't really tell you, but we keep an eye on the perimeter of this place. That's how we knew you two needed help, and we do basic security for the power station. That's mostly about making sure vandals aren't trying to steal the copper wire and that kind of shit. Don't they have their own security? No, they've got Neville. Both Evan and I snort. Neville is a nice guy, but he's as geeky as they come, and I mean that in the pocket protector, can't make a fist kind of way. It's all automated over there. Neville's in charge of making sure the automations are running and connected up, but we do the patrols and apprehension when it's necessary. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Worry is tinging Emma's voice. It's not, I swear, sweetness. More likely to be hit by a crazy tourist on that road than have anything happen at the station. Now it's Evan's turn to stare at me like I've grown two heads. I see his lips quirk like he's amused at something, but I could fucking care less. Let him worry about his own girl. Which, if there was a betting pool on which of the team were going to find love, Evan would be pretty close to the bottom. Welcome back. Welcome back, lady listeners. All the stuff I talked about before the audiobook will be in the show notes. Mel will have everything down there. So make sure you check it out for the free books, the new releases, where to go to sign up for her newsletter. It's all going to be down below. So I think that's it. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make sure you're a bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind. And read me romance. Read, read me romance.